Section two of the Aeneid of Virgil. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book one, part two. His tender parent could no longer bear, but interposing sought to soothe his care. Whoe'er you are, not unbeloved by heaven, since on our friendly shore your ships are driven, have courage, to the gods permit the rest, and to the queen expose your just request. Now take this earnest of success for more, your scattered fleet is joined upon the shore. The winds are changed, your friends from danger free or I renounce my skill in augury. Twelve swans behold in beauteous order move, and stoop with closing pinions from above, whom late the bird of Jove had driven along, and through the clouds pursued the scattering throng. Now all united in a goodly team, they skim the ground and seek the quiet stream, as they with joy returning clap their wings, and ride the circuit of the skies in rings, not otherwise your ships, and every friend already hold the port, or with swift sails descend. No more advice is needful, but pursue the path before you, and the town in view. Thus having said, she turned, and made appear her neck refulgent and dishevelled hair, which, flowing from her shoulders, reached the ground, and widely spread ambrosial scents around. In length of train descends her sweeping gown, and by her graceful walk the queen of love is known. The prince pursued the parting deity with words like these, Ah, whither do you fly, unkind and cruel, to deceive your son in borrowed shapes, and his embraced shun, never to bless my sight but thus unknown, and still to speak in accents not your own? Against the goddess these complaints he made, but took the path and her commands obeyed. They march obscure, for Venus kindly shrouds with mists their persons, and involves in clouds, that thus unseen their passage none might stay, or force to tell the causes of their way. This part performed, the goddess flies sublime to visit Paphos and her native clime, where garlands ever green and ever fair, with vows are offered and with solemn prayer, a hundred altars in her temple's smoke, a thousand bleeding hearts her power invoke. They climb the next ascent, and looking down, now at a nearer distance view the town. The prince with wonder sees the stately towers, which late were huts and shepherds' homely bowers, the gates and streets, and hears from every part the noise and busy concourse of the mart. The toiling Tyrians on each other call to ply their labor, some extend the wall, some build the citadel, the brawny throng, or dig or push unwieldy stones along. Some for their dwellings choose a spot of ground, which first designed with ditches they surround, some laws ordain, and some attend the choice of holy senates and elect by voice. Here some design a mole, while others there lay deep foundations for a theatre. From marble quarries mighty columns hew, for ornaments of scenes and future view. Such is their toil, and such their busy pains, as exercise the bees in flowery plains. When winter past and summer scarce begun, invites them forth to labour in the sun. Some lead their youth abroad, while some condense their liquid store, and some in cells dispense. Some at the gate stand ready to receive the golden burthen, and their friends relieve. All with united force combine to drive the lazy drones from the laborious hive. With envy stung they view each other's deeds, the fragrant work with diligence proceeds. Thrice happy you, whose walls already rise, Aeneas said, and viewed with lifted eyes their lofty towers, then, entering at the gate, concealed in clouds prodigious to relate, he mixed, unmarked, among the busy throng, borne by the tide, and passed unseen along. Full in the centre of the town there stood, thick-set with trees, a venerable wood, the Tyrians landing near this holy ground, and digging here, a prosperous omen found. From under earth a courser's head they drew, their growth and future fortune to foreshow, 
this fated sign their foundress juno gave of a soil fruitful and a people brave sidonian dido here with solemn state did juno's temple build and consecrate enriched with gifts and with a golden shrine but more the goddess made the place divine on brazen steps the marble threshold rose and brazen plates the cedar beams enclose the rafters are with brazen coverings crowned the lofty doors on brazen hinges sound what first aeneas this place beheld revived his courage and his fear expelled for a while expecting there the queen he raised his wondering eyes and round the temple gazed admired the fortune of the rising town the striving artists and their arts renown he saw in order painted on the wall whatever did unhappy troy befall the wars that fame around the world had blown all to the life and every leader known there agamemnon priam here he spies and fierce achilles who both kings defies he stopped and weeping said o oh, friend even here the monuments of trojan woes appear our known disasters fill even foreign lands see there where old unhappy priam stands even the mute walls relate the warrior's fame and trojan griefs the tyrian's pity claim he said his tears a ready passage find devouring what he saw so well designed and with an empty picture fed his mind for there he saw the fainting grecians yield and here the trembling trojans quit the field pursued by fierce achilles through the plain on his high chariot driving o'er the slain the tents of rhesus next his grief renew by their white sails betray to nightly view and wakeful diomede whose cruel sword the sentries slew nor spared their slumbering lord then took the fiery steeds ere yet the food of troy they taste or drink the xanthian flood elsewhere he saw where troilus defied achilles and unequal combat tried then where the boy disarmed with loosened reins was by his horses hurried o'er the plains hung by the neck and hair and dragged around the hostile spear yet sticking in his wound with tracks of blood inscribed the dusty ground meantime the trojan dames oppressed with woe to pallas fain in long procession go in hopes to reconcile their heavenly foe they weep they beat their breasts they rend their hair and rich embroidered vests for presents bear but the stern goddess stands unmoved with prayer thrice round the trojan walls achilles drew the corpse of hector whom in fight he slew here priam sues and there for sums of gold the lifeless body of his son is sold so sad an object and so well expressed drew sighs and groans from the grieved hero's breast to see the figure of his lifeless friend and his old sire his helpless hand extend himself he saw amidst the grecian train mixed in the bloody battle on the plain and swarthy memnon in his arms he knew his pompous incense and his indian crew penthesilea there with haughty grace leads to the wars an amazonian race in their right hands a pointed dart they wield the left for ward sustains the lunar shield athwart her breast a golden belt she throws amidst the press alone provokes a thousand foes and dares her maiden arms to manly force oppose thus while the trojan prince employs his eyes fixed on the walls with wonder and surprise the beauteous dido with a numerous train and pomp of guards ascends the sacred fane such on eurotas banks or kynthos height diana seems and so she charms the sight when in the dance the graceful goddess leads the choir of nymphs and overtops their heads known by her quiver and her lofty mien she walks majestic and she looks their queen latona sees her shine above the rest and feeds with secret joy her silent breast such dido was with such becoming state amidst the crowd she walks serenely great 
their labor to her future sway she speeds and passing with a gracious glance proceeds then mounts the throne high placed before the shrine in crowds around the swarming people join she takes petitions and dispenses laws hears and determines every private cause their tasks in equal portions she divides and where unequal there by lots decides another way by chance aeneas bends his eyes and unexpected sees his friends antheus sergestus grave cloanthus strong and at their backs a mighty trojan throng whom late the tempest on the billows tossed and widely scattered on another coast the prince unseen surprised with wonder stands and longs with joyful haste to join their hands but doubtful of the wished event he stays and from the hollow cloud his friends surveys impatient till they told their present state and where they left their ships and what their fate and why they came and what was their request for these were sent commissioned by the rest to sue for leave to land their sickly men and gain admission to the gracious queen entering with cries they filled the holy fane then thus with lowly voice Ilioneus began o queen indulged by favor of the gods to found an empire in these new abodes to build a town with statutes to restrain the wild inhabitants beneath thy reign we wretched trojans tossed on every shore from sea to sea thy clemency implore forbid the fires our shipping to deface receive the unhappy fugitives to grace and spare the remnant of a pious race we come not with design of wasteful prey to drive the country force the swains away nor such our strength nor such is our desire the vanquished dare not to such thoughts aspire a land there is hesperia named of old the soil is fruitful and the men are bold the enotrians held it once by common fame now called italia from the leader's name to that sweet region was our voyage bent when winds and every warring element disturbed our course and far from sight of land cast our torn vessels on the moving sand the sea came on the south with mighty roar dispersed and dashed the rest upon the rocky shore those few you see escaped the storm and fear unless you interpose a shipwreck here what men what monsters what inhuman race what laws what barbarous customs of the place shut up a desert shore to drowning men and drive us to the cruel seas again if our hard fortune no compassion draws nor hospitable rights nor human laws the gods are just and will revenge our cause aeneas was our prince a juster lord or nobler warrior never drew a sword observant of the right religious of his word if yet he lives and draws this vital air nor we his friends of safety shall despair nor you great queen these offices repent which he will equal and perhaps augment we want not cities nor sicilian coasts where king acestes trojan lineage boasts permit our ships a shelter on your shores refitted from your woods with planks and oars that if our prince be safe we may renew our destined course and italy pursue but if o best of men the fates ordain that thou art swallowed in the libyan main and if our young eulus be no more dismiss our navy from your friendly shore that we to good acestes may return and with our friends our common losses mourn thus spoke ilioneus the trojan crew with cries and clamours his request renew the modest queen a while with downcast eyes pondered the speech then briefly thus replies trojans dismiss your fears my cruel fate and doubts attending an unsettled state force me to guard my coast from foreign foes who has not heard the story of your woes the name and fortune of your native place the fame and valor of the phrygian race we tyrians are not so devoid of sense 
nor so remote from phoebus influence whether to latian shores your course is bent or driven by tempests from your first intent you seek the good acestes government your men shall be received your fleet repaired and sail with ships of convoy for your guard or would you stay and join your friendly powers to raise and to defend the tyrian towers my wealth my city and myself are yours and would to heaven the storm you felt would bring on carthaginian coasts your wandering king my people shall by my command explore the ports and creeks of every winding shore and towns and wilds and shady woods in quest of so renowned and so desired a guest raised in his mind the trojan hero stood and longed to break from out his ambient cloud achates found it and thus urged his way from whence o goddess born this long delay what more can you desire your welcome sure your fleet in safety and your friends secure one only wants and him we saw in vain oppose the storm and swallowed in the main orontes in his fate our forfeit paid the rest agrees with what your mother said scarce had he spoken when the cloud gave way the mists flew upward and dissolved in day the trojan chief appeared in open sight august in visage and serenely bright his mother goddess with her hands divine had formed his curling locks and made his temples shine and given his rolling eyes a sparkling grace and breathed a youthful vigor on his face like polished ivory beauteous to behold or parian marble when enchased in gold thus radiant from the circling cloud he broke and thus with manly modesty he spoke he whom you seek am i by tempest tossed and saved from shipwreck on your libyan coast presenting gracious queen before your throne a prince that owes his life to you alone fair majesty the refuge and redress of those whom fate pursues and wants oppress you who your pious offices employ to save the relics of abandoned troy receive the shipwrecked on your friendly shore with hospitable rites relieve the poor associate in your town a wandering train and strangers in your palace entertain what thanks can wretched fugitives return who scattered through the world in exile mourn the gods if gods to goodness are inclined if acts of mercy touch their heavenly mind and more than all the gods your generous heart conscious of worth requite its own desert in you this age is happy and this earth and parents more than mortal gave you birth while rolling rivers into seas shall run and round the space of heaven the radiant sun while trees the mountain tops with shade supply your honor name and praise shall never die whate'er abode my fortune has assigned your image shall be present in my mind thus having said he turned with pious haste and joyful his expecting friends embraced with his right hand ilionius was graced serestes with his left then to his breast cloanthus and the noble gaius pressed and so by turns descended to the rest the tyrian queen stood fixed upon his face pleased with his motions ravished with his grace admired his fortunes more admired the man then recollected stood and thus began what fate o goddess born what angry powers have cast you shipwrecked on our barren shores are you the great aeneas known to fame who from celestial seed your lineage claim the same aeneas whom fair venus bore to famed anchises on the idaean shore it calls into my mind though then a child when teucer came from salamis exiled and sought my father's aid to be restored my father belus then with fire and sword invaded cyprus made the region bare and conquering finished the successful war from him the trojan siege i understood the grecian chiefs and your illustrious blood your foe himself the dardan valor praised and his own ancestry from trojans raised enter my noble guest 
and you shall find, if not a costly welcome, yet a kind. For I myself, like you, have been distressed, till heaven afforded me this place of rest. Like you, an alien in a land unknown, I learn to pity woes so like my own. She said, and to the palace led her guest, then offered incense and proclaimed a feast, nor yet less careful for her absent friends, twice ten fat oxen to the ships she sends, besides a hundred boars, a hundred lambs, with bleating cries attend their milky dams, and jars of generous wine and spacious bowls she gives to cheer the sailors' drooping souls. Now purple hangings clothe the palace walls, and sumptuous feasts are made in splendid halls. On Tyrian carpets richly wrought they dine, with loads of massy plate the sideboards shine, and antique vases all of gold embossed, the gold itself inferior to the cost of curious work, where on the sides were seen the fights and figures of illustrious men, from their first founder to the present queen. The good Aeneas' paternal care, Iulus' absence could no longer bear, dispatched Achates to the ships in haste, to give a glad relation of the past, and, fraught with precious gifts to bring the boy, snatched from the ruins of unhappy Troy, a robe of tissue, stiff with golden wire, an upper vest, once Helen's rich attire. From Argos, by the famed adulteress brought, with golden flowers and winding foliage wrought, her mother Leda's present, when she came to ruin Troy and set the world on flame. The scepter Priam's eldest daughter bore, her orient necklace, and the crown she wore, of double texture, glorious to behold, one order set with gems, and one with gold. Instructed thus, the wise Achates goes, and in his diligence his duty shows. But Venus, anxious for her son's affairs, new counsels tries, and new designs prepares, that Cupid should assume the shape and face of sweet Ascanius, and the sprightly grace should bring the presence in her nephew's stead, and in Eliza's veins the gentle poison shed, for much she feared the Tyrians double-tongued, and knew the town to Juno's care belonged. These thoughts by night her golden slumbers broke, and thus alarmed to winged love she spoke. My son, my strength, whose mighty power alone controls the thunder on his awful throne, to thee thy much afflicted mother flies, and on thy succour and thy faith relies. Thou knowest, my son, how Jove's revengeful wife by force and fraud attempts thy brother's life, and often hast thou mourned with me his pains. Him Dido now with blandishment detains, but I suspect the town where Juno reigns. For this tis needful to prevent her art, and fire with love the proud Phoenician's heart, a love so violent, so strong, so sure, as neither age can change nor art can cure. How this may be performed now take my mind. Ascanius by his father is designed to come with presents laden from the port, to gratify the queen and gain the court. I mean to plunge the boy in pleasing sleep, and, ravished in Idalian bowers to keep, or high Cythera, that the sweet deceit may pass unseen, and none prevent the cheat. Take thou his form and shape. I beg the grace but only for a night's revolving space. Thyself a boy, assume a boy's dissembled face, that when, amidst the fervour of the feast, the Tyrian hugs and fawns thee on her breast, and with sweet kisses in her arms constrains, thou mayst infuse thy venom in her veins. The god of love obeys, and sets aside his bow and quiver and his plumy pride. He walks Aeolus in his mother's sight, and in the sweet resemblance takes delight. The goddess then to young Ascanius flies, and in a pleasing slumber seals his eyes. Lulled in her lap amidst a train of loves, she gently bears him to her blissful groves. Then with a wreath of myrtle crowns his head, and softly lays him on a flowery bed. Cupid, meantime, assumed his form and face, following Achates with a shorter pace, 
and brought the gifts the queen already sate amidst the trojan lords in shining state high on a golden bed her princely guest was next her side in order set the rest then canisters with bread are heaped on high the attendants water for their hands supply and having washed with silken towels dry next fifty handmaids in long order bore the censers and with fumes the gods adore then youths and virgins twice as many join to place the dishes and to serve the wine the tyrian train admitted to the feast approach and on the painted couches rest all on the trojan gifts with wonder gaze but view the beauteous boy with more amaze his rosy-colored cheeks his radiant eyes his motions voice and shape and all the gods disguise nor pass unpraised the vest and veil divine which wandering foliage and rich flowers entwine but far above the rest the royal dame already doomed to love's disastrous flame with eyes insatiate and tumultuous joy beholds the presence and admires the boy the guileful god about the hero long with children's play and false embraces hung then sought the queen she took him to her arms with greedy pleasure and devoured his charms unhappy dido little thought what guest how dire a god she drew so near her breast but he not mindless of his mother's prayer works in the pliant bosom of the fair and moulds her heart anew and blots her former care the dead is to the living love resigned and all aeneas enters in her mind now when the rage of hunger was appeased the meat removed and every guest was pleased the golden bowls with sparkling wine are crowned and through the palace cheerful cries resound from gilded roofs depending lamps display nocturnal beams that emulate the day a golden bowl that shone with gems divine the queen commanded to be crowned with wine the bowl that bellus used and all the tyrian line then silence through the hall proclaimed she spoke o hospitable jove we thus invoke with solemn rites thy sacred name and power blessed both nations this auspicious hour so may the trojan and the tyrian line in lasting concord from this day combine thou bacchus god of joys and friendly cheer and gracious juno both be present here and you my lords of tyre your vows address to heaven with mine to ratify the peace the goblet then she took with nectar crowned sprinkling the first libations on the ground and raised it to her mouth with sober grace then sipping offered the next in place twas bitius whom she called a thirsty soul he took challenge and embraced the bowl with pleasure swilled the gold nor ceased to draw till he the bottom of the brimmer saw the goblet goes around Eopas brought his golden lyre and sung what ancient atlas taught the various labors of the wandering moon and whence proceed the eclipses of the sun the original of men and beasts and whence the rains arise and fires their warmth dispense and fixed and erring stars dispose their influence what shakes the solid earth what cause delays the summer nights and shortens winter days with peals of shouts the tyrians praise the song those peals are echoed by the trojan throng the unhappy queen with talk prolonged the night and drank large draughts of love with vast delight of priam much inquired of hector more then asked what arms the swarthy memnon wore what troops he landed on the trojan shore the steeds of diomede varied the discourse and fierce achilles with his matchless force at length as fate and her ill stars required to hear the series of the war desired relate at large my godlike guest she said the grecian stratagems the town betrayed the fatal issue of so long a war your flight your wanderings and your woes declare for since on every sea on every coast your men have been distressed your navy tossed seven times the sun has either tropic viewed 
the winter banished and the spring renewed end of section two